Welcome back. We have a mouse shootout on our hands today and we've done this before. The last time we did this, we actually looked at wireless mice under $25 and you guys loved it. So I thought I'll make another video because content. But also, the last time we did this, we kind of found out some pretty interesting things about all those generic mouse that you find on Amazon, but you never know whether to click on or not. If you haven't seen that video, links in the description below. But basically, the best one was the Red Dragon Mirage. Pretty good mouse actually, but even that mouse kind of fell short of what I wanted in terms of the sensor. None of them were quite good enough for really fast-paced FPS gaming, for example. So I thought to myself, okay, let's do this one again, but let's compromise a bit. Let's go wired. I know, I know, 50-year-old technology, it's 2021, but let's just see if we compromise on the wireless tech, can the manufacturer give us something in return? So I did. I scoured the internet. I looked at Amazon.com, Amazon.in, Flipkart, and AliExpress to make sure that anything I talk about today is available to you no matter where you're living. And I found a bunch of mice that kind of fit the bill. Now bear in mind that some of the mice that are available out there might be around $25 in your region, but not in every region. For example, the Razer Viper Mini is $25 to $30 in most parts of the world, but in India it's $100. And other countries with high import taxes, same thing. So I'm not going to talk about that. If you want to see that, then comment down below and we'll get that video going. But today's mice, available at around $25 before taxes at the time of shooting this video in most parts of the world. So, shall we? Our first contender today is the Lenovo M100 IdeaPad gaming mouse. That's it, it's, it's, that's the name. Yeah, well done Lenovo. But the mouse itself looks and feels pretty darn solid. Doesn't feel like it's going to give out anytime soon. Now, Lenovo claims that it comes with a sensor that can go up to a thousand hertz polling rate and a DPI shift button that shifts between four settings from 800 to 3200 DPI. And it does. I tested the DPI setting, it's pretty accurate. I tested the polling rate, it hovers around 950 to 980 hertz and touches 1000 hertz every now and then, which is about the same performance I get from my G Pro Wireless Superlight. So, well done Lenovo, as advertised. Now the device itself is 96 grams, which is a little bit on the chunkier side by today's standards. And the cable it comes with is rather stiff, so it does add to the cable drag. The overall perceived weight of the device, therefore, it's a bit of a chonky boy. Not something you can't get over, but definitely a little bit of a heavier device. It does come with RGB, very subtly located inside the chassis and shines through only through the mouse wheel and through the IdeaPad logo at the back. But what's really interesting is that LED doubles up as a DPI indicator. Now it's got two DPI shift buttons, a plus and minus over here, which is good because if it had only one button, you'd have to cycle through all the DPIs to get to the one you want. Now you can just go up and down. But what's interesting is every time you click on either one of those buttons, the LED inside shifts to a single color and stays on that color for about four seconds. Different colors correspond to different DPI settings, which means you don't need to add any software it tells you on the mouse which DPI setting you're in, which a lot of cheaper mice, heck, a lot of more expensive mice also don't really do. Now, as for the buttons, they are a little bit on the stiffer side, but they're not the end of the world. They're not the worst I've ever felt. The scroll wheel, on the other hand, is definitely a little bit cheap feeling, but also a little bit on the stiffer side. What's really not that great is the side buttons. The side buttons feel, okay, it's a little bit mushy, but that's not the problem at this price range. The problem is how it's placed. Because it sort of angles upwards as it goes towards the back of the mouse, if you place your thumb like so, if you want to press that back button, then you're going to have to angle your thumb backwards and upwards to get it, which is a little bit uncomfortable. Now, the top of the device has this nice silky smooth finish and the sides of the device are a little more textured to give you a little more grip, but the texture isn't particularly great feeling on the thumb. Nonetheless, at least they thought about it. What's interesting about this device is its shape. Now, this is definitely not a palm grip mouse and I say that because a palm usually tapers out to the front and is wider at the back of the palm. So any palm grip device must take that into account. This one is actually wider over here and it tapers out towards the back. And what that means is, it doesn't matter how big or small your hand is, it won't feel very comfortable palming this device. But if you're into the claw or fingertip style of grip, then this should work just fine. Another clue as to why it may not be a full palm grip device is the placement of the sensor. You'll notice the sensor, instead of the usual center or center forward placement, is actually placed behind, fair bit behind actually. And what that means is if you go for a full palm grip, the sensor is actually aligned with this part of your palm, which is less than ideal, 
But if you fingertip it, it is aligned with this part, right? Between the fingers here, which is a lot more conventional and generally gives you a wider range of movement as well. Overall, I'd say you get a pretty decent device that does what it says on the tin, is a little bit on the heavier side, you get a bit of cable drag and definitely the button placement could do with improvement. But in game, it did feel relatively comfortable with a hybrid palm grip and it did the trick just fine. Now, if the thought of a Lenovo mouse has tickled you so far, then you're in for a bit of a treat because our next contender is the Philips Momentum. That's right, Philips made a gaming mouse. It's a cool name though, Lenovo, are you taking notes? It's also called the G403 because you can't not have code names now, can you? Now this is a chunky boy because it comes in at 114 grams and that is pretty darn heavy by today's standards, but it does come with a braided cable. However, this ended up being even stiffer than the Lenovo cable, at least in my experience, not supple at all, adds to cable drag quite a bit and therefore adds to the perceived weight of the device quite a bit, which is a little bit of a shame because this is also one of the most comfortable devices I've used. Now, more on that later. Philips claims that the sensor can go all the way up to 1000 Hz and there's a switch on the back that allows you to switch between 500 and 1000 Hz. In my testing, it worked as advertised. It also has an interesting button on the back to switch on and off an RGB LED. Just like the Lenovo, a change in DPI is indicated by a change in the RGB LEDs. On the subject of DPI, this one goes between 500 and 4000 DPI. Unfortunately, there's only one DPI button, which means you have to cycle through everything to get to where you want to go. Now, talking about the ergonomics of the device, I will say that the shape of the device is actually really nice. It's definitely a right-handed device. It's got little scallops on both the buttons to place your fingers. And generally speaking, this works for both palm, claw, fingertip, hybrid. It just works for everything because nothing is too pronounced. What is pronounced, however, is this indent on the side where your thumb goes. And what that means is if you're trying to reach those side buttons, then your thumb kind of has to do this thing where it'll move both outwards and upwards to get at the buttons and that makes it a little bit uncomfortable. They've tried to compensate for that by angling the buttons out a little, but in my experience, it's still a little bit uncomfortable. Now the buttons themselves all around feel a little bit mushy and a little bit stiff, so they're not the best buttons. In fact, the mouse one and two button have the longest travel that I've ever seen on a mouse button and that's not ideal. However, the click happens fairly early and and therefore you don't have to press it all the way. The mouse wheel is similarly stiff, but is a little bit recessed in the body that makes it a little bit easier to get to. Overall, I would say that the buttons are a little stiff and mushy. It's not something you can't get over, but it's not ideal. What you absolutely can't get over, however, is the lift-off distance of this mouse. This had the biggest lift-off distance of any mouse that I've used so far, which meant that repositioning the mouse in-game is nearly impossible without actually moving your character. And to me, that makes it unacceptable to use. Quite frankly, this was shaping up to be really good if it wasn't for the weight of the device. It was shaping up to be a very comfortable device overall, and it has those features which allow you to use it without without adding any software, but that lift off distance though, really just not ideal, unfortunately. Which means we have to move on to our next contender, Razer. This is the Razer Death Adder Essential. Now, this guy has a sensor that goes up to a thousand hertz polling rate, and it does in my testing. In fact, all the mice today work exactly as advertised, no false advertising anywhere. So that's definitely something that you do see in budget mice, a little bit of false advertising here and there with some of the brands, but all of the brands today that we're testing, perfect. Now the sensor goes all the way up to 6,400 DPI, which is great, especially considering it's got a great amount of granularity, which means you can choose a lot of settings between zero and 6,400, but you have to install the Razer software, which is a solid 360, 300, 190 MB or something. The good news is whatever you set on the software is saved on the mouse. So you can uninstall the software and you can use the mouse as is. Now this mouse comes in at 96 grams, exactly the same as the Lenovo IdeaPad gaming mouse, but it comes with a braided cable. And this, this is how a braided cable is supposed to be. It's soft, it's supple, it's thinner than the other cables, and cable drag was minimal amongst all the mice we have today. And what's more, the 96 grams, somehow it spread out over the body in such a way that it didn't feel that heavy. Like after a few hours of usage, you get used to both the Lenovo and this, 
but the Lenovo still feels heavier despite it being the same weight. Now, the shape of the device is a little bit controversial. Again, it's a right-handed shape for sure, and it has a very pronounced hump right in the middle. What that means is if you have a hybrid palm grip, then it pushes up this part of your fingers, which is not ideal. If you full palm it, however, that's when it becomes really comfortable. Unfortunately, the finish of the device is such that it's got this semi-rough plastic finish on top and it does feel a little bit cheap, but it's certainly not the worst thing. Now, the mouse feet are nice and large, they're fairly slippery, and you can see that the sensor is slightly front of center, which makes this a really good mouse for fingertip as well as full palm grip, just not for hybrid palm grip. Claw grip works fine as well. This also has some of the best buttons in the game. Amongst all the mice that we're talking about, this one felt light, it felt crisp, it felt pretty darn good, and the mouse wheel was the easiest to actuate while also being fairly recessed in the body, which made it, in my opinion, a lot easier to use. Now, it doesn't have a DPI shift button, unfortunately. The only way to do that is in the software, so it's best if you dial it in beforehand and leave it as is. What I really want to marvel at is these side buttons. Can we just take a moment to to appreciate these side buttons. Not only are they nice and wide and easy to click, but they're also placed perfectly for your thumb. If you full palm it like so, then the crease in between the buttons actually lines up with the middle of the pad of your thumb, which means if you want to click on it, you can just pull your thumb up a little and click the forward or the back. Also, where you're gripping the mouse on either side, there's a bit of textured plastic there to give you that little bit of extra grip. And quite frankly, this is just one of the most comfortable mice that I have used in this price range. The combination of the weight distribution along with that supple braided cable and the fact that when you full palm this device, it's actually really comfortable makes this probably my favorite amongst today for my kind of grip. But if you're not particularly into the palm grip and you want something a little bit lighter, you might want to try the Logitech G102. Now, this is an old mouse, as you can see from the level of wear here, because this was actually one of my first gaming mice. This is a smaller mice than all the other ones we're trying today, in, but it's also the lighter, and it comes with this non-braided cable which is pretty supple. Honestly, it's quite a soft cable, pretty decent, but because that connecting bit in the middle of the cable and the mouse is so long, it still provides a little bit of cable drag. Another thing of note is that this mouse has very small mouse feet and they're not the greatest mouse feet in the world ever. So it does, however, come with a DPI shift button so you can cycle through your preset DPIs, which you can set in the Logitech gaming software. Again, once you set it, it gets stored on the device and you can uninstall the software. Now, in your region, this may be found as the G203. I think the difference is minimal like one comes with RGB, one doesn't, but the mouse and the sensor and the ergonomics, they're all the same. So whichever one is there in your region, you're getting the same mouse essentially. Now, as Logitech is known for, the mouse buttons are actually pretty light and clicky and they're pretty good. The mouse wheel similarly is fairly recessed, not as recessed as the Razer, but fairly recessed and reasonably easy to use. But what's particularly good about this mouse is the shape and the weight. This is the lightest mouse we have today. So if you have a fingertip or claw grip and you want something light to flick about really quick, this one might be the one for you. You can palm this device and if you have a small palm, it won't be uncomfortable, but this is a fairly small narrow device. So for me, a claw grip or a fingertip grip or even a hybrid palm grip works best. Overall, I don't have much to say about this. The texture is fine. Everything is pretty good. It has that Logitech level of manufacturing quality. So that's all very nice. However, I will note that these side buttons are rather small. They're positioned okay, but they are a little bit small even though they are fairly clicky. So that's definitely not as good as the razors. So finally, now that we've had a look at the four mice that I've lined up that meet all our criteria, what do I recommend? Okay, before I recommend anything, there are two things I wanna point out. One, there were mice that I ruled out. The Red Dragon has a couple of mice that are under $25, but not in every market. And it ended up being quite a heavy mouse, so I didn't add it in this shootout because we already had some pretty good mice that were even on paper better than it. The Lenovo mouse, on the other hand, is available at different prices at different times. So depending on when you're watching this video, the price may go up and down. So take a little time, take a couple of weeks, watch the price and it may increase or it may decrease. You might even get it at a better discount because right now, while filming this video, even though I bought the Lenovo mouse at $25, it is now $39 on amazon.com. But if you're in India and if you're on Flipkart, it's 
ten dollars so at ten dollars there is no mouse in the entire world that i could recommend more than the lenovo ideapad m100 gaming mouse ten dollars it's a no-brainer if it's anything more than 15 or 20 dollars then i would say start looking at the razer or the logitech what i can say with certainty is don't buy the Philips. That lift-off distance is too much. Do not buy the Philips. It's also the heaviest mouse. The Razer, in my opinion, if you're a palm grip kind of person, is the most comfortable mouse in this category and has the best buttons and has the best scroll wheel and has the best side buttons and ergonomics overall. If you want to fingertip it, you might find that hump in the middle a little too pronounced. If that's the case, if you want a fingertip or claw grip, if you want a lighter, smaller mouse, then the Logitech is just as good. The buttons are good, the feel is pretty good, but it's just not for a full palm grip. At under $25, I can confidently recommend both of those devices because both of them have a lot of customizability that you just don't get in cheaper mice. The Logitech has a slight advantage that you can shift DPI on the go, uh, even without the software, and the Razer, you can't do that. For me, full palm grip, it's the Razer. For you, depending on your type of grip, you can go with either one. There you have it. Apparently $25 is all you need to get an amazing mouse, as long as you're willing to keep it wired. Till next time, stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Namaste.